So what happens if you combine a book that reshuffles art history with a book about the art of postage stamps and your insanely enormous collection of actual postage stamps? Welcome to the fourth episode in my 52 Things in 2023. So this year, each week or so, I'm making a piece of mixed media art that is inspired by one or more of the insanely large collection of books that I have on my arty bookshelf. So far, I've made a cover page for my art journal and I've added two distinctly dotty pieces of art. So let's see what I'm going to do this week, shall we? This week, I started with this book called Drawn and Quartered and it contains arty images of different people. The pages are all cut apart like this so you can mix and match them as you like and on the left hand side of the pages there's a little story that gets mixed up as the images get mixed up and here's a smaller easier to consume kids version. So you have a bunny that turns into a buppy that becomes a bird or a purred or a squirred and that becomes a squirrel and then you have a kitten that can become a putton and many other things so both of these books are inspired by an art game that's known as the exquisite corpse that was a favored pastime of a group of artists called the surrealists maybe you've played this game before i know my kids and i used to do this a lot when we when they were young and the way we would start out is one person would draw a head and neck and then they would fold the piece of paper over so that all you could see was the very bottom of their drawing. They would pass it over to the next person who would add a torso and arms to this drawing. Now, they don't have to be humans. I used to do this a lot with my kids' art classes and I once had, had one of my students created a whole book of exquisite corpse drawings based on natural disasters. It was quite a hoot. Anyway, so here I am. I'm drawing the torso of my creature. And I guess I'm still thinking about all those spots that I did in week two and three. And then once the torso is finished, again, you fold over the paper so that the third person can't see what the first two people have drawn. And then they add the legs and the feet. And I'm going with a very leggy creature here. I'm actually thinking of tree roots, and but I realize looking at it now that it looks a little bit like, like an octopus, perhaps. What do you think? Does it look like an octopus or a tree or maybe something else? Let me know, okay? And again, there's some more spots because these were in fact all drawn by me. So I can't help but be a little bit inspired by what I've been doing before. And then once you've finished, all three people have finished, and I guess you could do this with as many people as you like, you open up the whole thing to see what kind of crazy, crazy creature you've created. And here are some examples of pieces that I did with an, a group of adults who did not consider themselves artists by any means. I think these are really quite fun, don't you? <laughs> I combine my drawn and quartered book with this fun little book, which is all about the art of postage stamps. Somebody gave this to me. It's all about postage stamps that were made in a particular style during a certain period of time. And I remember asking my friend why she gave it to me. And she said, well, you might be inspired by some of the color schemes and things. And that's true, but it's really not the style of art that I do very much. But I do know several people who I think would really enjoy this book. So I think it is time to pass this one along as well. The other two I'm probably keeping for now, but that one's going to get passed along because really I've got this huge huge pile of actual postage stamps that I can use to inspire my artwork if I want. And I've actually pulled some aside here. There's some fish themed stamps and a whole collection of, of birds here. And I, I have a watercolor class going on. So I'm gonna take those stamps in and let my students use them for the inspiration for their artwork. And the last time I 
dug into my postage stamps was last year's 100 day project and the 100 day project you just you just pick whatever you want and do it for 100 days and I chose to fill in this little book of drawing prompts with postage stamp inspired art if you want to see all of the pieces that I completed for this this project there's a video from last year that you can take a look at now that book off the with the postage stamps made me think off this book that somebody gave me as well now this is some sort of marketing catalog for graphic designers and the illustrations in that other book made me think of this and i think i'm going to use that in my project today and i'm not going to do the exquisite corpse that are cut off at the waist and that make a mix and match book i'm going to do something similar to what i did in this little booklet here where I cut apart images from magazines and created these characters. And in this case, I was inspired by this bright yellow paper that you've probably noticed me using quite a bit. I get it from a friend of mine. I have a connection and it's waste from the place that she works and I have boxes off it. I've gone through my book of graphic illustrations and I've pulled out some pages with images of people with arms and legs because I'm going to be using my postage stamps for the faces. Now let's see if I can find any good matches for some of these stamps. I'm going to start out with these puppies and kittens. Oh, look at those feet. I can use those, I think, somewhere. So let's see. There's this fellow on the unicycle. Is this going to work? That's kind of fun. A puppy head on a unicycle. That's kind of humorous. I like that. We'll maybe set that aside and think about that. I might use that. I don't know what I would do with this one. Now, this fellow with his hands out, I could do something with that. Maybe put a puppy head on him. That could be fun. Let's see. We'll set him aside, too, and think about that, perhaps. I love this little girl with the twirling skirts. Let's see what kind of head we could put on her. Oh, what about this lion head? The colors kind of match. And I, I think a lot of times the things that inspire me are the size that they kind of relate together, but also the colors. I love these little crowns. I don't know if I'm going to use the kitten and the dog. Oh, this piece. I love this piece. So much fun. And there are... Those little snaps with the heads of state from different places, that I think those could be really fun. Let's see if I can find one that's going looking in the other direction. It's harder to find stamps that look towards the right. But that one, Thomas Jefferson and some head of state from the Netherlands, that could be fun too with their hands tied together. Like this, this person here with the little schoolgirl skirt and this love the colors in this person using doing yoga and that pot there i could see using that perhaps as a torso somewhere oh this one this is cute the little girl with the teeny tiny teacup and the bird and then there's this woman here this other person here pouring the tea out that could be fun together like those little fairies and these big hands oh i found a few of those they could be fun too sort of holding on to a stamp. I think I could do something with those. So let's see, horse's head. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I use, end up using them. Maybe with that hand. Don't know. We'll see. So I've gone ahead and cut out some of the, the images that I found and I've pulled out some of my heads, found a whole bunch of Frida Kahlo heads. And let's see, I'm starting to arrange some of the limbs, the arms and the legs. I like that crown on Frida there, and then the bigger crown could maybe go on this bobblehead. Don't know yet. I'm just sort of playing around, seeing what works. So the interesting thing about Frida Kahlo, apparently she was a big fan of the Exquisite Corpse game that I showed you, so it's kind of seems fitting. Good coincidence that I have all these Frida stamps, and I've got that one there of Andy Warhol off on the side. And I think that also has a connection as well because he's well known for creating artwork that features a similar image used in several different ways like the Campbell's soup cans, Marilyn Monroe's head, or this one that I saw at the Louisiana Museum of Modern Art that I mentioned in my last 52 Things video. One of the things that you don't really realize about his paintings until you see them in person is the scale, how huge they are. This one fills the entire room. I was kind of liking this cage 
on Frida's head. It seems to go with her whole story about being in an accident and having a lot of physical limitations. So I feel like the cage as body seems really appropriate there. So I'm going to just temporarily stick those two bits together with the glue stick so that things don't go missing. And then I'm going to see if I can find some other limbs for this Frida head. Well, let's see, what am I going to, what am I going to use? I've got all kinds of things sitting there. Oh, the, these fun arms. I really enjoy these arms. There's two of them, but they are very different colors, very colorful, which I find, think is really, really appropriate for Frida. I love the way that she used color and bright colors. They do those really saturated colors. So let's see, let's glue those on to her torso there. This is working out really well. I don't really worry too terribly much about the scale, as long as they just generally seem to fit together. I noticed in that Drawn and Quarterly book, they hadn't really taken the time to kind of blend the images together, so there were sort of sh abrupt starts and finishes. The skirt, that little school gir girl skirt with the uh, with the band-aid on the knee, I think I think that fits Frida's story as well. Let's let's put that on on the bottom there. Kind of ends kind of abruptly on one side, but I'll see if I can do something about that later on. Maybe I don't know, maybe draw something on there. We'll see. We'll see what, what I decide to do. But for now, I like the way this looks. It fits really nicely. It fits on my page. I'm thinking about using this grid paper as a background here. Now let's move on to another my Frida stamps and find find some body bits to go with that. The ballet dancer legs. That's fun, right? Frida, Frida and her imagination full of movement. And look at this. Look at the colors together. I told you I'm inspired by color. Those fit so perfectly together and the theme seems it's really fitting here. I think this person is stirring a pot of maize or corn there. And let's see how Frida's head fits. Oh, look at that. That is just perfect. The colors, the the lines, everything that just works so well together. I really like those two. Oh, what did I find? The tail, the foxy tail. I think that that would make a cute addition to that, that first piece there and kind of distract your attention from that abrupt straight line there on that side of the legs there. I like that. That works for me. Now one more, one more Frida. What am I going to do with her? Let's see what I can find. These, the legs with the high heel skirt and the Mr. Muscle Man here, those colors. Again, I'm inspired by way, the way that the colors, but the sizes also really fit well. That could be a possibility, but let's have a look. I've got these, this little cartoon cheetah legs. Let's see if I can find something to put on top. Oh, got distracted. The hiking legs with the kind of zen, blissful upper body. That could be fun. I think maybe that'll work. And who do I have here? Martin Luther Think King? That's not who I meant to put there. Let's find Frida. There you go. Frida with the zen upper body and the hiking legs and the little flowers. The flowers seem very Frida, don't they? That's a possibility. I think I'm going to, I think there's my four, my four Fridas. Well, maybe not. Change my mind about that one. What am I going to do? Let's look for something. Oh yes, 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 yes. The all, the business suit, all business, business Frida. What am I going to give her for legs there? Let's see. Oh, now I've abandoned Frida. Now I'm working on Andy. He fits here. His head fits with that green, bright green shirt, pop art shirt. That seems to work. And now I've set those aside and I think that I have way more inspiration that's going to fit on a single page in my book. So I've decided that this collection really needs a book off its own. And I, I was going to go with a bright yellow, but I think I need this sort of sturdier cardstock and so I'm using slightly paler yellow again sort of inspired by the yellow book that I had before and that one's a keeper it gets glued down there I didn't want the whole page to have that grid but I did want to have a ground so my figures are not just floating and I'm going back to this whole idea of those big oversized hands that I cut out in in the beginning and I found this other hand that I think is fun too holding on to a heart and 
here you get to see my my less than good scissoring skills i definitely can't fussy cut my cutting is definitely not fussy and well, i like that the little heart on the shoulder there of andy here who's acquired some froggy arms and superhero legs i like that so everything's glued down now let's take a look at the final book so there's several versions of frida with some little Heart, sacred hearts and flowers added. There's Andy, the hands have made their way in. And I like that last one, the business suit, all business on the top and the crazy skirt below. <laughs> that one's fun. And I, you can see I can I use the feet, but that's not all. I've got more on the back. I just could not let some of these other ideas go. So they've gone on to the back there. And if you want to see political messages in there, be my guest, but there you go that's it for this week let's see where i end up going next week thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon